Okay, we are going to talk about how to make your novel unput downable. No matter what the genre is that you are writing in, we can make that book unput downable. Um, I am going to make these videos uh, short enough that you can can taste them on the run. Uh, I have a lot of people who uh, have trouble sitting still and don't learn well by sitting and listening. Um, they they are maybe the kind of learner that needs to move. Um, so I want these to be short enough that even the people who have trouble sitting still can get something out of these. And the other reason that I am making these short is I am working quite hard on putting myself first, which is very hard for me, uh, but I'm choosing my craft, my books, my writing uh, each morning. So these are gonna be about 10 minutes a piece, but we are going to keep talking about unput down ability and we're gonna drill down all the way to the sentence level. Um, and I'm gonna give you actionable things that you can take away and put into practice. But we're going to start with some theory because you need the, th I believe you need the theory. A lot of people don't believe they need the theory. I need the theory. Um, one of the reasons that I, I know what I know about craft is because um, this, there, there's so much going on in my brain. I didn't understand how to get it on the page in a, a logical way that would be compelling for people because the voices are, no, this is first, no, this is first, no, this is first. And I had to study pretty hard. I am, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I'm having trouble with my throat. I am not one of those people who sees a movie. Um, I, I'm aphantasic uh, and quite a few writers are. We don't see pictures, we don't hear voices. I, I pretty much have no idea what's gonna happen when I sit down and go to the page. Um, I've, I've told this as a joke before, but I've been trying to pitch my publisher on my next series and he's like, okay, go for it, pitch it. I'm like, there's a tree. That's it, that's all I've got for my next series. Um, so he, he said, no, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, take a bet on me, come on. Um, <clears throat> so I had to study this. I had to study pretty hard. And now I know quite a lot about, um, no, no, not quite a lot. I know how to make your novel unput downable. So let's start with a bit of theory. What are the two biggest selling genres in the market? Um, I'm imagining that we're all together and this is interactive and you're not just sitting taking notes and looking at the screen and waiting for the visual that I didn't make. Um, I did have a visual for Spain and everyone stopped listening to me and started writing it down. So, you know, that tells me what I need to know. Um, so uh, I'm imagining that you are going to answer the question and you are going to know the answer to this question. Two biggest seller, bar none, outstrip everything else in the market. Romance, romance is number one, perennially number one, and mystery, number two. And it's it's quite a drop to mystery, but they are the two top sellers in the market. Why? Why year on year are they the best sellers? What is that about? Once again, I'm imagining 10, 15 of you running to the mic because you want to answer this question because you've got an idea. Because you're a smart bunch. I can see that. I can see the smarts wafting off you. Um, so, so one of the answers, I brainstormed this for you, by the way. So whoever thought of this, good job. Uh, I got it on the ether. So I knew what you were thinking. Um, why is romance the number one bestseller year on year? Well, one answer could be women read more. And that's true. Women do read more. They make up more of the market. And someone out there knows the answer as to the percentages and um, can break that down for you. I'm afraid I didn't do that piece of research. But women read more than men. Okay, good answer. Um, escape. I hear this a lot for a lot of different genres. Um, and I hear it both as a reason and as a kind of apology, which we're going to talk about later on, um, why I want you to stop doing that. Also, why the, the escape that you're providing is um, actually good for the species, necessary for the species. Um, you are making people hallucinate. You are making, not me, because I don't see pictures, but you are making people 
go into a world and they step into the characters. There, there are fMRI studies that show that, that people, when they're reading, become, they identify, if you're doing it right, they identify with your main protagonist. Sociopaths, obviously, are going to identify with the villain. Um, they become them. They actually experience that life. That's going to be really important. We're going to talk about that as well. So we've got um, possibly because women read more, possibly because it's a means of escape. We're going to talk, we're going to really dig into that later on in the week. Um, wish fulfillment. I hear that as well. I hear that it's a kind of wish fulfillment. You know, we want to be the va 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 voom. Um, I, Gosh, was that Zsa Zsa Gabor? I, I don't know who, who made that. Um, but we want to be the gorgeous, fearless, overcoming everything heroine. We want to be the super cool spy who works everything out. So you can see for romance and mystery how we might identify personally as we're hallucinating. We might identify with these people that we wish we were. Um, but I want to, I'm just checking my notes and checking the time, making sure we're all in, on target. Um, I want to go a level deeper, a level deeper than these answers that we've heard, all of which are right, none of them are wrong, but they're not going to give you the tools that I want you to have to make your novels unputdownable. Um, because you can't just like manufacture women to read your book. I mean, I guess some of the marketing people would say that you can. All right, we're going to leave that one there. Um, I want you to have actionable craft-based tools that deal with the reason that these two genres outsell everything else. And there is a brain science reason. Um, I haven't heard anybody else say this in this way, although I have been studying it for a while and thinking for a while because I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to give you what I've already given you. I want to give you new stuff. Um, and the, the answer to why these outsell, if you were watching the videos last week, you got a hint of it. You got a hint and the hint was left brain, right brain. Hmm. Hmm. Logic, feeling. Now, of course, it's not that simple. The, the brain is a whole organism. And in fact, the newer studies show that we need both of those sides. I'll talk about this. I'll give you some examples as to why we need both of those and why it has been such a massive disservice to, to the human experience to uh, prioritize logic over feeling. Uh, it turns out, actually, we can't make any decisions without the right brain functioning. We actually are overwhelmed with all the possibilities, all the logical possibilities, but the right brain has to do some work, which we'll talk about later in the week, in order for you to just make a simple decision. As simple as, I'm going to use this mug today when I'm talking to you. All right, we've got left, we've got right. What has that got to do with romance and mystery? I'm going to tell you it is to do with plot, which is left. Oh, that's your right. I'm so sorry. It's it's my left. Um, plot and story. Plot is what happens, logical things. Story is why it matters to the main protagonist. Story is how they change, how the character changes. And in the modern novel, that is what we are looking for. We are looking for a character starts in one place with one mindset, inciting incident, hits them in the misbelief, and then the plot keeps hitting them in the misbelief and they story, 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 story. And at the end, they are a different human being. They've changed because of the action of the plot on them. Um, so we have got two things. We have got what and we have got why. And I'm going to tell you that you need the why. Um, if we didn't need the why, we wouldn't have multiple versions of, uh, let's say, something that's very plot driven, um, a serial killer story. So we know what Jeffrey Dahmer did. We know what Ed Gein did. But the thing that we care about is why. 
why did they do it? It's one of the reasons that Psycho is such a great film, um, because Hitchcock got into the why of it, and that reveal is the most important part of the movie. All right, we just clipped over 10 minutes, so what we've got is the reason that romance and mystery outsell everything else is because they deal with left and right in pure terms. They deal with plot and story uh, and the preponderance of why we're going to get into the brain science of why we are so drawn to understanding. Why did they do it? But that is going to be for tomorrow. All right. Do lots of writing and have a lot of fun. It matters. See you tomorrow.